Hello and welcome to the Voice Extra Podcast. My name is Tayo and I am here with student, voice contributor and entomologist. B. Carey. How are you doing today, B? Hey, I'm okay. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, we had a few technical issues before, but we're very, really ready to go now. Yeah, all par for the course. Yeah. We are here to talk about your article, which is, you've got mail a love letter to entomology. Yeah. <laughs> so... Would you like to explain for the listeners and for me, because I'm clueless, exactly what entomology is? Okay, so, I mean, I'm only a first year, so please, entomologists of Twitter, do not (laughs) grill me if I get it wrong. Um, (laughs) Entomology is basically the study of insects. So you're looking at all the little six-legged critters that are running around. Yeah, not including spiders. Not okay, including no. spiders. Important <laughs> clarification. Yeah. <laughs> um, before before we get like atted by entomologists, I don't know. Yeah. Do people get atted by entomologists on Twitter? Oh yeah, Twitter entomology is brutal, really brutal. <laughs> is, this, <laughs> is this like a very specific part of Twitter I've just never seen? Wow, this is a distraction. But like, what what is entomology Twitter like? I'm curious now. Entomology Twitter is. It's intense. There's a lot of people that are very, very knowledgeable in their field. So if you're going to go onto entomology Twitter and ask something, like you've got to be prepared for the response. If you're going in, <laughs> and I was, this is going to be a very niche example, but I thought that I'd found a brown marmorated stink bug, which is something that's not really been spotted in the UK a lot. It's actually an um, invasive species. I was very excited, took to Twitter and then um, was promptly put in my place that, in fact, it was a normal <laughs> shield bug nymph. And I oh, oh. yeah, OK. <laughs> it's very much it's it's never outward aggression. There's but there's definitely some kind of a well, it was obviously a shield bug nymph. And you go, oh, God. Yeah. Oh, so no. it can be pretty brutal. You have to have a, a thick skin, ironically, for entomology Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, sorry, that was a complete detail, but that sounds fun. Yeah. So would you like to explain the article? Um, And I know you wrote in like the style of a letter. So why did you choose that style? So I've been doing a kind of a series called A Letter To. And I've done it from everything from Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez to the British Cup of Tea. So this is the kind of the latest in my A Letter To series. This one specifically being a love letter because entomology is really, really cool. Yeah. Yeah. And I it's just it's a nice format to work with because it allows you to talk quite personally and put in quite kind of humorous parts into it, whilst also writing something that kind of presents knowledge in a way that's quite easy to digest for anybody that doesn't know anything about entomology. Yeah. Yeah, it is like, you should go read it. It's very like legible. (laughs) And I actually understood things about, I would never think, oh, I'm going to learn about entomology, but it's presented in a really (laughs) fun way. So you get get all the knowledge. (laughs) I'm glad. (laughs) because <laughs> i i really don't have a lot of entomology knowledge so i mean it can it can sound fancy if you kind of pump out a few latin names for a few little insects but i yeah i'm i'm an absolute beginner myself so how important are insects to you like what draws you to studying them well i mean for a long time i wanted to be a vet ever since i was little so it was always animals in general but then i went to a lot of vet practices and kind of So what it was like and that there's often not a lot of hands on time or you become a vet nurse. And I was warned in no uncertain terms by a lot of vet nurses that you should not become a vet nurse because you just (laughs) essentially become a dog's body. Um, So then I kind of felt a bit confused um, and I went along to Montgomery Shire Moth Group. They do like mothing night and my partner works for Montgomery Shire Wildlife Trust. So I was there already helping to do a bat night. And they combined the bat night with the moth night. And I kind of got to see all these people standing around traps, looking at these small little flying things, thinking, what on earth are they doing? Um, But actually, yeah, ended up really enjoying it. Went back for a few others, started to look into the field of moths, which are called Lepidoptera. There you go. There's your fancy Latin term for today. Yeah, I just kind of got it is. It's fancy. (laughs) Um. Yeah, just kind of got interested in it. And I think the more that you look into it, the more you realise what like a huge and diverse field entomology is. And so it's like whenever you find someone that's an entomologist, they'll always have a passion for something in particular. So 
my friends that are entomologists we have completely different interests and it's it's really good because you can just pick and choose basically yeah mm -hmm. so i've got to ask what is your favorite insect oh what a question <laughs> I feel like you needed to prep me in advance for this one as well. It probably has to be a moth. I really, really love moths. They're, they're just so underrated. And scientifically, there is not a difference between butterflies and moths. Like there's not, oh. well, there's not one characteristic that you can give them that separates the two because you get day flying moths, like the way that they hold their wings. It can be like it, it differs from both butterflies and moths so there's not one characteristic that you can say oh yeah this is a butterfly this is a moth obviously yeah. um in terms of genomics is that the word i'm looking for yeah in terms of basically you know how they evolved from they are different and obviously they're different species but there's mm -hmm. not one characteristic that you can point out that separates them from each other and That's... they're really beautiful and colorful as you can see in the cover photo for my article <laughs> Okay, and what is your least favourite insect as well? Oh, it's got to be a toss-up between... Oh, no, it's got to be crane flies. <laughs> I have What's a real thing crane against flies? crane flies. It's, it's the legs. They just... They have <laughs> yeah. so many and they lose them so easily. Like, you can open a door and like it accidentally hits one and like three of their legs will fall off. It just, it just seems oh. irresponsible. <laughs> yeah, that... That doesn't sound great now I think no. about it. Nope. <laughs> they just, yeah, they they have a real, scientifically speaking, they are very poorly attached to the body. So it is very easy right. for them to fall off. Um, And they just tend to just kind of fly in your face, fly on the wall, fly wherever they like, with no regard for people's personal space. So, oh. crane flies. <laughs> so now, now we've established that. Um. <laughs> Um, what do you think are some like misconceptions about entomologists? Um, I think probably one of the misconceptions mostly is that it's just people that are very nerdy, very alone. Um, you know, it's just <laughs> just them that they don't have any friends or that they don't want to make friends. Um, which is absolutely great. Um, and true in some cases. Like I, I love my own company. You know, it's great to be out in the field. Um, but at the same time, the entomology course that I'm on um, at Half Adams University. So there's about eight or nine of us in my course. And we're we're one big friendship group. And we do a lot of social entomology things together. We'll have moth nights and all of that. And, you know, we're not like always just kind of <laughs> being nerdy over books. You know, we have parties and things yep. as well. And yeah, they're pretty crazy parties. Shout out to the entos. <laughs> Yeah, so I think that's probably the biggest misconception is that it's kind of just people that just pour over books by themselves in a little corner of the library. Yeah, it's it's a lot. There's a lot more variety and diversity within the entomology community than you would think, and a lot more excitement. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what is a moth night, by the way? Oh, okay. So a moth night is basically so you have different kinds of traps to attract moths. So they're attracted to certain wavelengths of light. So if you set yeah. a trap up, moths will come to it from dusk all the way to like four or five a.m. in the morning and you'll get different species. Um, and a moth night, it can either be when you get a group of people around and you'll stay there until like one, two in the morning, um, which is what we used to do with Montgomery Shoe Moth Group. Or if you're doing it with school kids or something, what you can do is they can set the trap up with you in the evenings and then you run it overnight. and um, so basically they retain the moths, so the moths fly towards the bulb, go, ah, yeah. a bulb, fall down into the trap and then can't get back out. So oh, okay. if you're doing it with school kids, it means that in the morning, obviously they come back into school and you can do what's called an unboxing, kind of like yeah. a boohoo order, but more exciting. <laughs> <laughs> you can take it all off and look at all the cool moths that you've caught, which obviously for kids is, is something that's quite fun and interesting to do because obviously they set out the previous day. Yeah, so yeah. moth nights come in all shapes and forms, but that will cool <laughs> so obviously um there's a lot of stuff going on with like climate change and how that affects environments mm. how is that affecting insects uh in a word badly very badly mm. i mean it, it differs between species obviously you've got problems with i'm sure people have heard about bee populations declining which are obviously a really key pollinator yeah. but actually a lot of species are pollinators so like butterflies and moths when they visit flowers they'll pollinate wasps 
and bees and I'm sure a lot of other insects that I haven't mentioned, they're all so important in terms of our pollination, which is obviously then key to the survival of the human race because of mm-hmm. how much they do in terms of food and crop production. Um, I mean, for some insects, climate change is a good thing. If you look at um, mosquitoes, obviously we get them here in the UK, but the mosquitoes that you find in Africa, which are the ones that carry kind of malaria and things, they generally don't come over to Europe, which is why we don't have it here yet. But with climate change, as it starts heating up, you're going to get insect species like that that are going to start coming to the UK. So good for them, bad for us. But yeah. Right, got it, yeah. Yeah. I think I think the problem is that a lot of the impacts of climate change on insects, we're not necessarily sure about what's going to happen because it all yeah. depends about our management of it. You know, with big drives for rewilding and things that could be really good for insects. But it's just there's a lot of unknowns. So what sort of um, steps have been taken by entomologists to counter this? Well, as a complete newbie in the entomology community, I don't really feel qualified to, to say very much. But I mean... It's it's an evolving field, so a lot of things that are happening um, beforehand were very necessary to a, like our fundamental understanding of insects. And from yeah. there, now that we've got that fundamental understanding, we can build on that to to help counteract the effects of climate change, to help counteract the effects of habitat loss. Um, yeah, but it also has to be where the money is. Obviously, you can't do a research project on nothing, so there has to be the funds in it. So you find that yeah. a lot of entomology research is based around crop production because obviously they they can have the money for that yeah so hopefully in the future the funding range will kind of expand as we appreciate the importance of it and then there will be more measures in place and more entomologists doing a lot of good things to try and stop it and I'm sure there are already I just I'm not I'm not closely aware of any at the moment so then what would you say the future is looking like for insects then and that's a very broad question but yeah (laughs) I would say a real mixed bag um, and definitely based on our handling of current and future events um, based on, you know, education campaigns around wildflower meadows or no mow may, all those kind of initiatives are really helpful, especially on a smaller scale. But then it's difficult because you have kind of unknown diseases sweeping through the population or you have especially non-native species, so many more non-native species. If you look at so harlequin ladybirds um look quite similar to normal ladybirds everyone thinks they're really lovely but actually they will kill our native ladybirds oh. yeah and so there's there's a lot of things that look really sweet and nice but are can actually cause a lot of damage to our ecosystem terrapins in waterways is one but because they have the cuteness factor it's often really hard to do public education and to actually do anything to change it because they look very cute and people don't want to kill things that look cute which is understandable but yeah Yeah. (laughs) complicated Uh, very (laughs) um so what do you think we as humans or presumably humans i don't know if anyone else is listening to this um (laughs) can learn from insects oh so much um and there's still so much that we don't know about insects as well um Obviously, I'm a bit biased because I'm very passionate about them. Um, But just in terms of how significant their role is, I think we can really learn from the interdependent relationships that they have with other things. Like if you look at the relationship between a flower and a pollinator, obviously the flower gets pollinated, which is really good. And the bee gets the nectar and things from it, which is really good. And then together they create a thriving ecosystem that helps others it's that kind of that community and that working together that I think as a human race we could really learn from because I think we often struggle to see past our own bubbles but actually everything is interconnected and you know something happens here and it has a knock-on effect there and a knock-on effect there and you see it in nature and I feel Mm -hmm. like if we could harness the knowledge that we that we garner from watching that that we could make sure that we make better decisions and make sure that we take everyone into account and not just ourselves when we make changes. Yeah, definitely. Mm. And last but not least, if people wanted to learn more about insects, where would they start? Ooh. Well, if you're people that are on Facebook, there are a lot of really, really great Facebook pages that are for newbies and experts alike 
that I find really interesting and I just learn things through as I go through. So there's UK bees, wasps and ants, I think it's called. And it's just, you know, yeah. people will post a picture of it in their garden, you know, oh, what's this? Or someone else will say, what's this weird thing I saw the bee doing the other day? Um, yeah, so it's it's just a lot of people coming together from all different expertise levels and just kind of trying to work out what stuff is. Um, and you get to learn some really cool, interesting facts about stuff. There is also a yeah. UK spiders one which I am on in an attempt to desensitize myself to spiders. <laughs> Got it. Um, yeah. And there's, there's butterfly conservation. They're really good. Um, the Royal Entomological Society. That's good. And I've just yeah. got an article published in there. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yeah. So we will link all of those in the show notes. So yeah. thank you for joining me today. Um, That's okay. If thank you for having me. You, no worries. People wanted to find you, chat about insects. Mm -hmm. uh, where would they go? Absolutely. I mean, um, Twitter's always a good place. Um, I'm ento underscore b on Twitter. That's b e a. Um, but also, I'm in yeah. I'm in most of the Facebook groups for insects. So if you ask a question, I may well be able to help. But yeah, there's there's a lot of people out there that are really willing and really happy to share their advice and expertise so if you have any questions find the relevant facebook group and ask and you'll have people that have been studying them for you know 30 40 years alongside doing an office job or something that just just love to have new people there and especially young people yeah that's that that sounds great so yeah. um if you wanted to find us uh or vo voice and or the writing that we do, you'd go to voicemag.uk. If you want to find um, Instagram and Twitter, where we'll like tweet out um, articles, interviews, tell you when stuff's going on, all that sort of stuff, that is at voicemag.uk. And then you can go to at voice.extra, which is where the voice contributors will post stuff about like what we've been watching or reading or just general stuff about our lives. Um, also, it would be great if you could recommend this podcast to your friends rate review all that jazz it really helps with visibility and all of that so thank you so much for joining us yeah thank you yeah thank you uh, we will see you next week bye bye Thanks to Kevin McLeod for letting us use Shaving Mirror. You can find his stuff on incompetech.com.